you're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Okay, we're live. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Good morning. This is Greg Blurry, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Today we talk with uh, Gagan Luthra, the product marketing manager of Cyprus, on how brands like Cypress Semiconductor builds ecosystems for their brands or products. Um, we met uh, Gagan at uh, the Maker Fair this year, 2015, um, in the Bay Area, and uh, we thought when we looked at his uh, booth and uh, some of the example companies that are actually using Cypress products, I wanted to talk to him more and do a deeper dive on how kind of brands like Cypress Semiconductor create ecosystems around themselves and around their products. So anyway, uh, Gagan, thanks for joining us uh, on Nerdstalker Live from uh, Seattle, right? Hey, Greg, how are you? Yeah, live from Seattle. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's it's a typical Seattle uh, day there. <laughs> no, not typical, but it's been pretty. Uh, is uh, the summer looks like it's winding down? It looks like it's ready for fall. We've got some uh, nice misty rain and an no overcast day. It's pretty typical. <laughs> <laughs> We're already ready. Yes, you're ready for your winter or fall, I guess, coming up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, hey, anyone, uh, anything that you wanted to share about your background um, with the nerd soccer audience? Sure. Um, you know, I'm I'm with Cyprus, and I have been with Cyprus for about ten years. Uh, I joined the company straight out of school when I got my degree in electrical engineering here from Washington State. Uh, go Cougs! Um, and you know, I was I was introduced to Cyprus. Um, as while I was a student, you know, doing design, uh, senior design projects, uh, trying to build a new technology. So it was an interesting phase going from a student to a professional. Over the years at Cyprus, I've done a few different things. I've, I've done some software development. I've managed some offshore teams. I've uh, done some system level testing and uh, eventually found my way into product marketing because I realized at the end of the day, I had a love for the product and I wanted people to know about it, other people to learn from it and, and develop with it. Um, and then, you know, personal passions. I like blending my professional side with the with the nerd side of things. Uh, you know, the DIY maker side, which is why you met me at Maker Fair, of course. I have a personal passion for that for that side of our technology. And it's, it's really nice to see, uh, you know, technology uh, become uh, available at a price point and, uh, and at a ease of use point where you don't have to be that PhD guy sitting in an office for 16 hours a day trying to develop something. You can do something at home on the weekends when you have the spare time or you just have a passion for it. Yeah, you're right about that. I think um, the world has changed a little bit with the maker movement uh, that uh, Make Media has created around itself and, and, and just kind of the democratization of a lot of things. I've noticed uh, accessibility is one thing. I mean, I think uh, I saw a you know sixteen year old kid or no fourteen year old kid who was a CEO of his own company building a microcontroller. So I mean you know um, that just speaks to what we're talking about today, which is uh, building a brand ecosystem. So you know um, you know at the last Maker Fair, you know it was apparent that a lot of the chip manufacturers, um, you know licensors like ARM. Uh, chip manufacturers like Admel, Intel, TI, and of course, Cypress Semiconductor, uh, were reaching out to the maker community in, in kind of the hopes of building uh, their their community or creating their own innovation ecosystem. So, you know, was that something that, uh, you know, at Cypress Semiconductor, you guys were trying to do? Uh, absolutely. You know, it, it's obvious that microcontrollers come from the, the professional world, the commercial side of things, but they've found their way into the hobbyist and the maker side of things um and and for, for the longest time there's been that that big wall between these two sides of of engineers so to speak or, or creators and um you know companies other companies have, have tried to bridge that gap by by doing a few different things um cyprus has got its own thought process on how we want to go about it um you know we feel like if we make the technology and make it Easy, easily accessible uh, by doing various things like you know offering free software tools or offering hardware at a at a price point that's accessible to uh, the average maker. Uh, though that's one of the ways we're trying to bridge that gap and bring the technology from the professionals to the makers. 
uh, while still holding its professional grade quality. So you can be that 16 year old CEO of a company, uh, but make something real, make some products that could sell in the real market and, and make profits at the end of the day, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, and besides enabling the, the technology pieces in, in terms of hardware and software, it's also the education around the technology. And I, I think that's almost more important uh, uh, than, than the former. Uh, the enablement in terms of, you know, teaching people about your product, teaching them what you can do with it, how to do it, and then giving them various different ideas of, you know, here's the 10 or 100 or 1,000 different things I can, I can build with. Because really at the end of the day, we all, I feel like we all work with inspiration. The more we see around us, uh, the better we learn from that and we add our own little thoughts to it, our own little creative design process uh, to eventually create something that we want. And the whole maker movement's collaborative. You know, it's learning through doing and learning through sharing. Um, so we're strong proponents of that as well. The more we share, the more we teach and learn from each other, I think the better it is for everyone at the end of the day. You know, you, know, you brought up something that um, I just thought about when you m mentioned about you know, accessibility and everything, you know, and it, it and it, and it's not only, it seemed like the price points are coming down, uh, access to information is also available through YouTube and other things. And I, I know you guys do a good job of that, right? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's a byproduct of being in the times we are with the internet being so ubiquitous and all of us walking around with the computer in our pockets. Um, back in the day, if you wanted access to information you know you were trying to go through official official channels knocking on the doors of these big companies that may or may not have the time for you depending on how much revenue you're bringing into them um, you had to go through catalog and distribution partners which is why there's another whole industry around supporting uh, engineering companies and and bridging the gap between them and the users but today with the internet with uh, you know Websites have made it easy to access information, uh, be it uh, product information or technical documentation and stuff. Uh, platforms like YouTube are excellent, right? They're enabling you and I to talk today, uh, sitting hundreds of miles away from each other. Uh, but also, you know, YouTube has become a great platform to um, to sh uh, show show or teach uh, people something using videos. Uh, I do that all the time uh, around the home. You know. I, had to fix something in my kitchen the other day and rather than trying to read a user manual uh, on my garbage disposal on how to fix it, I watched a literally a 60 second YouTube video and I was able to fix it and you know impress my girlfriend with my <laughs> handyman skills. <laughs> but um, so that, you know, PSOX is doing a lot of the same things, Cypress is doing a lot of the same things. We're, we're creating these tutorials and it, do, it doesn't take too much to do them but the value in, in uh, having them out uh, out there for people to access and learn from, I think is, is highly immense. And we've had some good responses to our tutorial videos that we've put out through YouTube. Um, and, uh, you know, there's other engineering communities like GitHub, where people post and share projects. We've done a lot of that. And we've got hundreds of example projects of systems or different applications that you can build with PSOC. Uh, you know, our engineers built them at work, after hours, maybe on the weekend as a hobby when someone's got a good idea. And then we post them in GitHub and share them with the world. So anyone, um, you know, be it a professional or a maker, can grab that project and start working with it and, and design something that they're looking to it, looking for. You know, ed education is an interesting thing that you bring up earlier as well. And, and, and before, what I always felt that, um, you know, the, the chip companies like, uh, Cypress Semiconductor uh, was always reaching out to um, obviously potential engineers like myself who want to use the products and get comfortable with the products so I could use them in when I get into the professional world. But, you know, these people are, are not only the engineers of tomorrow, but also the startups of tomorrow, right? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I'm pretty vocal about that. The, the students of today are the engineers and professionals of tomorrow. And, and it's been that way for a while, but the scene is changing, you know. The college dropout of today may be the CEO of a startup that's going to be the next Fitbit or the next Parrot drone company. And uh, there's really no, no stopping uh, these, these uh, people, right, us included, 
because of the accessibility of technology, because of the learning and sharing of information. Um, so Cyprus does a lot of things with universities and schools. We have a program called Cyprus University Alliance, where we have a dedicated team inside the company that, that works with schools, colleges around the world um, to not try and uh, you know, dump the technology down their throats and, and, and be a commercial company that goes around saying, use my product, but rather we try and use our products, our platforms to teach engineering, to, to teach electrical engineering or computer science in these EECS programs uh, with a platform like PSOC, which is this really flexible system on chip where you've got a microcontroller at the core, but you've got some analog fabric to learn how to create circuits. You've got some digital fabric to learn how to create digital logic systems. And now you have communication like uh, Bluetooth low energy wireless that teaches you some of the intricacies of RF communication. You package all of that into a small $1 chip on a, on a easily uh, accessible $25 board and combined with free software tools that help you visualize the design that you're making. Uh, it becomes a great educational platform um, and not just a professional platform. So we've somehow managed to kill multiple birds with one stone and it's not really about killing birds here, it's about, you know, enabling users to use the technology. It's about enabling the students of today to, to realize what they will do in the professional world if they go the DIY or make a route or if they go with the, I want to work for a big chip company or a big consumer electronics company. God, that's awesome. I, I mean, I think that, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, can you kind of take us through or take the audience through of how C C Cypress Semiconductor kind of creates their own ecosystem of, of things? Um, you know, you kind of touched a little bit on education. Um, there's other things that you guys do, I noticed, that that allow you, uh, like events and, and other things like that. Absolutely. Um, you know, we start, we start with the chip, right? That enables and that's the basic fundamental technology. Um, and then we augment it with software development tools. And PSOC Creator is the means to end uh, with all chip designs PSOC. Uh, what we've done with PSOC Creator is made a you know, commercial grade IDE that's available free of cost with, with free compilers like GCC. So the, there's, there's no barrier to entry you know, at all. Uh, rather than being a reduced barrier, it's a zero barrier. You get into the platform really easy. And then to, to learn about the platform, to learn how to do things with the platform, as, as you were just mentioning, we've got the YouTube videos that are proliferated all over, all over the internet. We've got these example projects in GitHubs and in other engineering communities like Element 14, Cypress Zone, uh, community forums on our website. And uh, we, we do other things to, to talk about the product and to you know, give people a little sneak peek about it so they can come learn. Uh, one of the things we're doing is uh, webinars, similar to this, but an online event where you have an engineer come and talk about a topic that he's passionate about, that he's, uh, that he's uh, deeply educated on and shares that with the world. In fact, we have a webinar tomorrow with one of our partners, DigiKey, and the webinar is going to be talking about how to design uh, IoT systems using Bluetooth Low Energy. And that's a pretty hot topic. Everyone's interested in making consumer or industrial products with some sort of connectivity towards it. So if you're interested in that, uh, Wednesday on uh, with partner with DigiKey, we have uh, a, a webinar. Um, wow. and okay. Other things in terms of you know hands-on training in terms of a classroom exercise, where people can come to a Cypress site or one of our partners' site and sit down with a real engineer that acts as the instructor for the class and you you learn with the 25, 30 other people in the classroom, you've got your own hardware, you've got your own computer and your software and you start with some baby steps, learn how to you know say the hello world or blink an LED and at the end of the day leave, by, uh, leave with having built your own heart rate monitor with Bluetooth and an analog system and you walk away with that, uh, you walk away with the education, you walk away with the awareness but you also walk away having built something with your own hands that, that you can use, that you can show off to your colleagues and your partners and, uh, and really op open your mind to how to create the next big thing that you want to. So we host these workshops all over the globe um, and you can find more information on our website, cypress.com slash workshops, uh, free to attend. Uh, many of them give out free development kits. So hint, hint, that's a good way to uh, snag a free dev kit. And like I said, they're held all, all over the world uh, in in uh, in all cities and countries. 
Yeah, I think the uh, the outreach of what you guys are doing is, you know, one of the things that I saw that, that a lot of brands are trying to figure out how to do, right? Um, you know, through not only educational events, uh, but uh, information like we just talked about on YouTube. Um, also, community boards as well, right? I mean, you, you guys have a pretty extensive community board, I know, so uh, uh, I guess, I, I don't know if these application engineers on your end ever sleep, but they, <laughs> they seem to be on it quite a bit. <laughs> no, that, that's, a, that's a very important thing you hit on. Um, as we were talking about the maker community and really going back to the engineering community, a lot of engineers, a lot of creators and makers, they, they learn by collaborating, they learn by sharing. I remember when I was in college, my, my best way of preparing for a final was not sitting in a corner in the library and cramming on my with my books, but rather trying to get a group together of students and trying to teach each other the subject, because I thought that was the best way for me to develop a strong, deep learning of something. So we do that with, uh, you know, our Cypress forums, as you mentioned, are pretty active on our website. We call it the Cypress Developer Community. And you can go uh, browse by topic or browse uh, by product, depending on what you're interested in, post your query, or just share your information. And in, in most cases, in nine out of 10 cases, before a Cypress engineer has looked at that, uh, at that question to try and respond to it, somebody in the community or multiple people in the community have already given their first two or three responses. And then, you know, we just go in there to say, okay, looks like everything's going good. The community's helping itself. But not just on our community, on the Cypress forums, but other communities is uh, where we are active. Uh, Element 14 has a pretty uh, active engineering community with over 200,000 engineers sharing ideas about all sorts of different products. Uh, we have an active engagement there. Uh, you know, Reddit is is the internet's most popular community of everything in terms of people, um, you know, sharing and, and talking about their common interests. So we've created a PSOC subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash PSOC where we've got a growing and budding community of people who are exchanging information and ideas about the systems that they're developing with PISA. So it all comes down to uh, learning through sharing and learning through collaboration and putting the information out there in the open. So, you know, you, you say it once, you answer it once, but then hundreds of people benefit from that at the end of the day. Yeah, no, uh, God, I appreciate that. I, I think, you know, you really kind of informed the audience a little bit about, um, you know, I mean, you know, they could, you know, I consider this 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 topic we're talking about almost like a playbook for other startups to to use to how to engage into communities. Um, now, is is the uh, you know the social aspect you kind of touched about was kind of the communities and then the actual face-to-face uh, -face interaction. You know, how are how are other social channels doing for brands like yours in in terms of community building and information um, gathering? Right. The, you know, when you talk about traditional social media, um, it, it, it's excellent, right? The, the kind of outreach you can have with, with social media, people live their lives through it. A lot of people get their news through it, right? Uh, I've gone on the days where I'm picking up a newspaper to see what's going on around me, but I'm, I'm browsing my Twitter feed in the morning as I'm, I'm getting ready for work to know what's happening around the world. It's, it's you know, the fastest way to, for me to get information about what's happened today. Um, and different social platforms, I feel, serve different needs. Um, you know, Twitter is a great way to get that, that quick information, and Cypress does that. We share, uh, you know, any sort of new product development or any sort of events that Cypress is taking part in, events like these webinars or these workshops that I talked about, industry trade shows, the Maker Fair. Uh, we use Twitter to, um, as a platform to communicate with uh, our users. Uh, our customers and and all of them included, we use uh, you know Facebook to really build that community around Cyprus and the people who follow Cyprus products, and often with Facebook you know we see a lot of Cyprus employees that are part of our Facebook uh, group or page as well. Um, so you not only learn about Cyprus the company but Cyprus the people, the people that are behind the products that we build, everywhere from the vice presidents to the engineers to the manufacturing guys and the assembly lines. We're all big, one happy family. And then there's other communities like Google Plus, and, and this became, you know, I found this really uh, popular when we were doing our design contests uh, in conjunction with Arrow Electronics and Make. Uh, the Rope to Make Affair design contest with PSOC uh, BLE. 
Uh, we set up a, uh, with the help of Make, I set up a Google uh, community, a Google Plus community, and we f found that uh, you know, it was a very focused, engineering-focused piece of community where people were able to exchange their thoughts and ideas, but also multimedia content in terms of here's my project attachment, here's a video of what my project was doing, here's a screenshot of what my uh, uh, schematic looks like. Uh, so more than just textual information, there was a lot of multimedia content that en enhanced that interaction between users in the community. And uh, again, it came back to collaboration and learning from each other. Wow, that's excellent. Now, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, unless you want to uh, talk a little bit more, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> this is really kind of a cool thing, but I think you need to go help uh, those users. They're probably uh, sending you messages today, and uh, we'll go ahead and close off this interview, but I appreciate your time. Um, this is really valuable information for people who are ever, uh, you know, I think these, these things that you guys do is not just stuff that a big company does of course there's 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 something that a big company like yours could do but i think there's there's nuggets that a startup or a, uh, a smaller company could take from just you know the way you talk about how the interaction between the the people and 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 who are your customers and potential startup founders and, and, and this is so great so anyway thank you so how, how can people get a hold of you and uh, get a hold of knowing more about the cypress semiconductor ecosystem okay Absolutely. The, the best way to learn about Cyprus and then get in touch with Cyprus is, is through our website, www.cyprus.com. Uh, scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find links to contact us and uh, through different, different um, channels. If you're looking for technical support, you know, like most companies, you can, you can pick up the phone and call and speak with a real Cyprus engineer. Hey, I'm stuck. Here's my problem. Help me move forward. Uh, you can create a ticket for technical support and say, you know, here's the issue I'm having. And within 24 to 48 hours, you again get that a real engineer to respond with your next steps and how you should move forward. Um, social media is a great way to get in touch with us. Um, my, my email address is gagan.lutra at cypress.com. Feel free to email me anytime. I'm here to, to you know, talk to our users and help you out, uh, move forward in any ways you can. Um, yeah, it's not hard to find us. We're, we're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty big. You guys are pretty big, but I, I think I like what you guys are doing. And uh, again, I appreciate uh, your support and um, yeah, a chance to talk with you today. So anyway, um, uh, that was Gagan Luthra of Cypress Semiconductor, the product marketing manager. And I met him through uh, Maker Fair, and he had a lot to say today. And uh, we appreciate that. And uh, He's uh, he's available. He got his email address now, and he's gonna probably get ten thousand more emails after this. But that's okay. He, that's what he's here for. So anyway, this is Greg Gloria, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Hey, thanks a lot, Gagan. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Pleasure being with you.